Welcome to the Sourcing Hero podcast produced by Una, a group purchasing organization that empowers sourcing heroes and Art of Procurement, the world's largest procurement podcast network. I'm your host, Kelly Barner. The goal of the Sourcing Hero podcast is to capture the epic stories of people who are rising up and beating the odds to create exceptional value within procurement directly from those heroes themselves. Before I tell you anything about today's guest, I have to share how we connected. He listens to the show, and he had the creative idea to put in front of chat GPT one of the two classic questions that we ask on this podcast. So he asked it, what does the idea of a sourcing hero mean to you? And here is what chat GPT said. A sourcing hero is like a Jedi master of strategic sourcing skilled in the art of identifying cost-saving opportunities, negotiating contracts, and managing supplier relationships. They possess the ability to manage complex sourcing projects while aligning strategies with business goals. With exceptional communication and negotiation skills, a sourcing hero can triumphantly navigate the ever-changing sourcing landscape, bravely facing challenges with their team to conquer the unknown. In short, a sourcing hero is a strategic superstar that saves the day every day. And so without further ado, I want to welcome in today's guest. Joshua Palacios is the Senior Sourcing Manager at Roe. According to his LinkedIn profile, he, quote, refuses to be overlooked due to his work ethic and achievements. So welcome, Josh. Thank you so much for being with me today. Absolutely. A pleasure to be here, Kelly. Most creative way to meet somebody ever. I thought that was such an <laughs> awesome idea when I saw your post on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, I figured, you know, I've been listening to the podcast for a while now. Let me let me ask ChatGPT what uh, what they think, what it thinks a sourcing hero is. So I thought that was pretty cool. Absolutely. Now, what else is it helpful for people to know about your professional experience? Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, one thing I, I love about being in sourcing and procurement is that, and I hear this from a lot of guests on the show, is that we kind of don't plan on going into procurement. You know, it kind of just finds us. So that, that's kind of that's kind of the same same deal with me, right? Except my, I think mine was a little bit more, mine was a, a little bit more unique in that I got my first experience with anything related to supply chain while working as a um uh, a wheelchair pusher at Midway Airport, believe it or not. So, interesting. Yeah, very, very, very interesting. And at the time, you know, it was, it, it was a quick job. You know, I, I was a teenager. I didn't really understand. I didn't, I didn't understand anything about supply chain back then. But in retrospect, I can see how supply chain had a pretty big impact on, on, on that position, right? So, because when you think about a wheelchair pusher, um, what we have to do is, we have to get the wheelchairs to the gates at the right time and at the right quantity. And that's yeah. essentially, essentially the, that's the essence of, of supply chain management. Right. So, um, but yeah, so that, that, that's where I got like my really first experience, my first ex- real world experience with anything to do with, with supply chain and understanding demand. Right. It was a different setting, but still, still the same, the same concepts. Um, and then eventually I was like a, a lead in in that position to where I was managing the the inventory for the wheelchairs. Believe it or not, we had, oh, I think it was two hundred and three wheelchairs at the at, at the time. And at, on the night shift, um, I was responsible for making sure that all of those chairs were back, put into place, and you know checked off the list to make sure that we had them ready to go for the morning shift. So, again, that was like inventory management uh, one hundred and one. And I didn't realize it back then, but Slowly but surely, you know, I, I, I kind of just, I, I took that experience and, and built it up into like inventory management and then purchasing throughout my career. Um, I've built, I've built purchasing processes from the, from the ground up. Um, and like the first half of my career was a lot more, a lot more tactical in, in purchasing. And now I'm, I'm more so on the strategic sourcing side of things. And that's kind of where I've, I've fallen in love with, with really, you know, supply chain and sourcing in general. So that's again, going back to why I listen to the podcast, you know, I am a sourcing uh, professional. I, I, you know, I, I love the podcast. I love hearing everybody's um, 
insights into what a sourcing hero is. And again, that's why I figured asking ChatGPT would be probably a a, a good thing to, to to see what see what it thinks what a sourcing hero is. Well, you clearly have a, a creative approach and a way of seeing the world. I, I love the example, you know, you talk about the inventory management, the just-in-time, the planning, right? It's almost like risk mitigation, making sure all of those wheelchairs are where they are expected to be the night before so that every day the system can reset on the right foot. And I know from our previous conversation that you spent more time experimenting with with chat GBT. I think it's 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 sort of the you know the thing of the moment and everybody's experimenting with it. But even thinking about the way we each think about using something like that gives us something new to reflect on. So I'm I'm curious about your general thoughts on generative AI. Uh, what has your experience been like so far? Well I I think uh, generative AI is incredible. Um like simply put it's 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 an incredible tool it's really going to help us i i fundamentally believe that if we utilize it correctly it will it will 10x our skills and you know 100x our output right we just need to be able to adapt and adapt to the to the technology um so far my experience with it um it's been it's been very interesting. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. It's, it's been an, it's been an interesting experience because it, you know, it's a new technology. Yeah. Um, there, it, I say new, I mean, AI has been around for, I think the early two thousands, I think is when AI first started really like, um, being implemented and, you know, it's been chat GPT kind of just, it kind of just made it easy for, the consumer to use uh, an AI chatbot, right? And to be able to communicate with it, um, very user, it's very user friendly. So, but I think one of the main things is we need to understand that we have to sift through the noise. Um, and, and by that, I mean this, when ChatGPT like first broke through the scene, I remember so much content being made out there about you can make chat you can make 700 make 700 dollars a day using chat gpt make you know make 30k a month using chat gpt and that's all the content that i kept seeing on on youtube right so that's where it kind of gets like oh well, this is just a fad this is you know this is this reminded people of nfts and bitcoin and things <laughs> of that nature right but you really have to sift through that noise and look for the content that is really valuable right and like one of the things that I think is most valuable to look for is prompt prompt engineering. Um, it, if you know, if, if if the community is not familiar, um, essentially prompt engineering is just understanding how to communicate effectively with with ChatGPT or a, any kind of AI um, AI tools, AI technology out there, right? So prompting is key. Prompting is your friend. So the more you understand how to communicate with something like ChatGPT, the better the output is going to be. Absolutely. Well, let's think about <clears throat> some potentially applied value within procurement. You know, have you experimented with any procurement specific tasks where through refining your approach to prompting, you were able to get something valuable back that could potentially help you at your day job? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's funny. Let me let me let me kind of like uh, take a step back here. Um, you know, a few weeks ago, I I really started diving deep into LinkedIn groups. Uh, a lot of the procurement and supply chain groups out there, Kelly, I see you're part you're part of a few of them as well. So you might have seen you, yeah. you might have seen a few of my polls that I've asked. But um, I did ask uh, many of the supply chain communities their thoughts on ChatGPT and whether or not they were interested to know how they can use chat GPT to, um, to improve their skill set in within supply chain, right. And I have the statistics here. So out of 1947 votes, 85% of the community voted yes, that they wanted to know more how to use chat GPT. So that's, that's a little, that's a little more than 1660 yeses. So there's a lot of, a lot of supply chain professionals out there that I think that are very curious to know how we can use ChatGPT, um, and I thought that was very interesting. So, a few of the ways that I've been able to use it so far is um, through negotiation. Believe it or not, um, oh, interesting. I, 
Yep, I, I built out a, um, I call it a negotiation simulator with ChatGPT. Um, I have a whole document outlined, a uh, very high level document outlined. It's a very simple prompt that I used with, uh, with ChatGPT to just get it to become a negotiation simulator, right? So the scenario was, I am the buyer and ChatGPT was gonna be the supplier. Um, I communicated that to, to ChatGPT. Um, and then I just gave a, I gave a real world example of, of, you know, what a, what a typical negotiation might be when it comes to the dreaded cost increase from your supplier. Right. So it, and it, it, it took the, it took the form of email communication. So I was communicating back and forth with ChatGPT. I said, you know, you are, you are going to act as a supplier. I am going to be the buyer. Your name is supplier. My name is buyer. Let's start the negotiation simulation. Hmm. So I, I, I would say something like, Hi, hi, supplier. Um, I noticed that you increased your prices by 15% within the, w within this product or within this category. Um, can you shed can you shed some light into into the into the into the factors for um, the cost increase? And long story short, you know, it was just it was a very professional back and forth communication with with ChatGPT, um, and we came to a consensus that that you know that there were and it's very interesting how like the communication um really evolved throughout throughout the back and forth right like chat gpt would come back and say say things like they they were tracking certain commodities and commodity prices increased within the market and then i went back and said well you know in our in our contract agreement we have we have um in in our contract agreement we have um, levers in place that kind of mitigate any kind of cost increase, right? We're, we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be held to a certain cost. Um, and you got, you are not honoring that cost. So kind of like what gives, like, can you shed some more light on that? Um, and then we just, go, we just went back and forth. Right. And eventually it came to the point where chat GPT said, okay, I, I under, I understand your, your frustrations with the, with the cost increase. Um, Let's let's explore ways that we can we can mitigate this cost increase together. And you know, I think at at the end of the day, that's what us procurement professionals. That's one of our functions, right? Is mitigating mitigating cost increase. Um, and it's always good to hear your suppliers say that at the, at the end of the day, right? Like let's work together to mitigate Absolutely. this cost increase. So, and I think that's just very very surface level. Um, I think the more that we can train ChatGPT into negotiation. Um, you know, give it certain negotiation tactics, um, the better we can become on our end as procurement professionals when it comes time to to negotiations. Um, you know, one, one of the things that I, I think is going to be valuable here is a lot of us, a lot of us deal and talk with um, our, our account reps, sales reps. Um, we communicate with them constantly through email. Um, one of the things that I think we can do, I haven't tried this just yet, but I think one of the things we can do is eventually take take snippets of our email communication with our account reps, put that into ChatGPT, and have ChatGPT kind of analyze what uh, interesting what, what what our sales reps communication style is, what their negotiation style is, and then we can use that to kind of better prepare ourselves for you know, a future, a future negotiation, whether it be a small negotiation or a pretty big negotiation, but we can use it to kind of predict certain scenarios that might happen in the future um, when we're dealing with that specific account rep. So, you know, kind of develop a profile for that account rep. Um, that way we could just be better prepared. And this can also work on the, on the supplier side as well, right? Like they, they can, they can do exactly the same thing for to, how to, how to communicate with us procurement professionals, which is what I think is really, really great here. Well, and it's interesting. It's sort of like predictive reverse engineering, right? So yeah. you're, you're taking that example of having an actual email exchange and loading it in and saying, okay, what do you think would potentially be a next move this person would take? And even to your, your point about sort of tone and, and style, to me, that's one of the things that is most fascinating about this particular tool. And I'll be completely honest, we've done a lot of experimenting with, you know, now write this blog post in the style of mm -hmm. Monty Python, or mm -hmm. now, you know, do this in the style of a pirate, which has been a lot of fun at, at Art of Procurement. Um, but <laughs> you could also say to ChatGPT, okay, we've done this simulation, now do it, but the supplier rep is angry 
or frustrated yeah. or stressed yeah. out, you can bring that. And even if it's seeing the differential between what was sort of a run of the mill type of exchange or negotiation, and how does it change if you change the outlook and the frame of mind of the other person participating? I, I think that's a very creative use of AI. Absolutely, and you know, negotiation is one of the many things we have to we we have to um, consider in our role within procurement, right? So I think it's especially early on for the early procurement yes. uh, professional. Like I think this is super useful. You know, you won't you you'll get the training and you won't hurt anybody, right? Like you're not going to actually this is, this is not real world negotiations. You're not going to mess up any any kind of contracts with within yes. the business. So this is going to give you a lot of practice. You know, whether you're doing it during your nine to five, outside of your nine to five. I think it's only, again, going back to my, going back to my thesis, if you will, on this will, uh, this will 100x your output, right? I mean, if you put in the time to understand how, how to communicate effectively with ChatGPT and utilize it for things like negotiation uh, within procurement, I think your output will be will be incredible. You know, I think that, I think this is a tool that I wish I had 13 years ago when I started in <laughs> when I started in, in purchasing. Right, like it would it would have helped me back then. But um, I think it's incredible now for a lot of a lot of young a lot of young folks that are that are kind of getting involved into the world of procurement. Absolutely, and you had also mentioned the last time that we spoke, sort of experimenting with using chat GPT to help develop category strategies. That's something sort of completely different from negotiation. Talk a little bit about how you would envision using generative AI to help bolster your category strategy. And, and if you've actually tried it, anything that you've learned. Yes, absolutely. So this is, this is the one area where I think chat GPT is also going to shine um, outside of the more tactical stuff within procurement, you know, inventory planning, demand planning, forecast, things like that. Um, I think ChatGPT is really, really great at doing that. But when it comes to something more, um, uh, something a little more that uh, I, I would say that is going to take a little bit more like cohesiveness and a little bit more in depth, like I also think that's where ChatGPT is going to help, right? I mean, we're, we're all using it to help us with our content, right? And if you think, you know, what if you if we think about what a category strategy is, I mean, at the end of the day, it's sort of like a piece of content. Um, you just need to understand how to again communicate with ChatGPT to make it output an effective category strategy. And what I've learned so far in in kind of trying to implement that is um, really going back to prompting. I think one like uh, and and I, and I'll read this prompt. Um, one of the prompts that I have saved in my in my history um, with ChatGPT, but um, essentially for category strategies, one of the things that I found to be fairly effective right now, and I know this can be more more finely tuned, but here, here's here's an example of the prompt that I would use. Um, so I, I communicated to ChatGPT, you are category manager GPT, an AI tool that generates effective category strategies for complex businesses. What do you need from me to begin drafting a category strategy for my business? Mm. Um, so I think you know that that tells ChatGPT what it, what what we want it to be, um, and then it's it's also I think it's effective because you're asking ChatGPT what it's going to need from you to deliver you know the foundation of a effective category strategy, and one and so it spit out eight yeah eight different outputs. Um, and I won't, and I won't go into the details of, of what it said, but essentially there's, there's eight bullet points. They need business objectives, product service portfolio, market analysis, customer analysis, sales and distribution channels, pricing strategy, promotion and advertising, and financial analysis. So then what I did is I, I kind of just made, made this up based off of like pre a previous company that, that I worked for. And I kind of input at a high level, each of those. Uh, input information on each of those inputs that ChatGPT was asking for, um, and it kind of spit out, you know, a it, it spit out a pretty broad category strategy, which is what I expected. Um, you know, it, it, it and again, I won't go into too much 
detail on the strategy. It's just a lot of uh, a lot of words that <laughs> ChatGPT spit out. So, I, <laughs> but it's I, a refinement I would, process. You it, you start somewhere and that gets you going, and then you say, mm, "This seems broad," or maybe if I gave you this other piece of information, you'd have a better recommendation for me here. It's it's the start of a process. Exactly, and that's right where I was headed. So yeah, it's 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 spit out like you know some some very broad information, some good information, but again, this is good information to get the wheels turning. And I think when a lot of us start developing category strategies, like that's one of the areas where you know it can kind of be a struggle, right? Like where where do we start our category strategy, right? Um, and you know, eventually, like I, I think obviously a, a a good place to start is aligning the category strategy with the business objective, yeah. um, and the, and then that's where I. That's where, like, after it spit out, after it responded to me, I told it, all right, well, here's a six step process I want you to follow and take into consideration when thinking about developing a category strategy. So, you know, the, the six steps were just analyzing the current state, perform a risk assessment, um, identify alternative suppliers, consider applicable levers, um, create an action plan to reach the target, and then eventually summarize the strategy. Summarize the strategy. And I think that's also where ChatGPT is going to shine as well, but I'll get into that later. Um, but yeah, then it, then it took those, then it took what I gave it back and then spit out something that was a little bit more uh, cohesive and a little bit more tailored to the actual like mm -hmm. inputs that I provided. So then that way, you know, I, I would never say that copy 100% of what ChatGPT gives you into your category strategy, right? I think that's just going to set you up for, um, failure. Um, I don't think I don't think the, the tool is there just yet to be that to be that specific, but it's here for the foundation for the framework of developing the category strategy again, to get our wheels turning to maybe see things that we weren't really considering in the category strategy, um, and really just to speed up the process because we know yeah. de developing a category strategy does take time, right? I mean, a lot of us a lot of us have sleepless nights because we're thinking about the most cost-effective category strategy to implement, <laughs> right? Yes. So um, I think this is where ChatGPT is going to help us. It's going to it's going to speed up our time. It's going to help us brainstorm. Like I like using it as a brainstorming tool, uh, especially when it comes to developing these these complex strategies that we that we're all faced with on a, on our in a daily basis. So there's clearly a lot changing right now in the way that we work, in new capabilities that are becoming available. Do you have any thoughts about how those of us that are human professionals should consider <laughs> helping ourselves evolve with these changes? You know, is it, you've talked about prompting and about needing to develop that skill or the creativity that goes into finding different applications for something like chat GPT. So is it about bolstering our skills around being able to use these new technologies or is it about investing in soft skills so that hopefully we have a little bit longer of a runway before the robots mm -hmm. all figure out how to be empathetic? <laughs> um, any advice you would have for other procurement professionals based on some of these things being able to be bolstered by technology versus where we can create a competitive advantage as humans? This is such a great existential question. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I think now that tech is becoming in the world where tech is always evolving, um, I think it's always going to be important for us, whether we're in procurement or wh which whichever industry we are in. I think it's always going to be important to stay in the know try to stay ahead of the curve on the technology that's being that, that's being released almost on a consistent basis, right? I think a lot of these tools can truly help us um, develop our skills, can become better procurement professionals, better sourcing professionals. But at the same time, we can't lose the soft skills. I think soft skills are are still so incredibly important um, I mean, the great leaders of the world, I think they all, they all exhibit great soft skills. Um, they they may, they may be technically savvy. Um, some may, I mean, I've worked for, I've worked for leaders that weren't so technically savvy, but they were very, very, they were, they, they, their, their soft skills were very sharpened. And I think it's just it needs to be a healthy blend. Um, I think if you're starting out early, I think getting involved 
get, getting getting ahead of tech, I think is going to is going to be used to your advantage. If you you know if you're two years within your procurement uh, profession, uh, professional experience, right? I think hone those technical skills as much as possible and use um, use uh chat gpt and generative uh ai to to your advantage and i think it's gonna get you further ahead quicker um but you still need to maintain you still need to have those soft skills in in developing somewhere right and i think naturally in the work setting soft skills are naturally developed right you just need to be conscious of it um soft skills you know they they're, they're not going to go away so we need to i think just be conscious of the fact that we need to continually develop our soft skills, whether it's early on in our career or later on in our, in our career, those always need to be developed. Um, and I think, you know, naturally we, again, we just work on those throughout time, right? Whether, whether we're spending, you know, five years at one company, seven years at another company, two years with one company, um, we're constantly developing our, our soft skills as long as we're constantly communicating and working with other humans, <laughs> that is. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a, it's a, it's honestly a blend of both, Kelly. I, I think yeah. we need to understand that tech is going to be more important in our in our daily work routine. Um, we need to accept that. Um, we can't be resistive or stubborn to that. We just need to embrace it. Um, and at, at the same time, just don't lose sight of us being human. Don't lose sight of us. You know, we still run on emotions. We you know e e emotions kind of you know, sometimes they burn us. Um, so we need to, <laughs> we need to be conscious of that yeah. fact that, you know, we need to still massage our, our soft skills as well as implement new technologies into our skill set. Absolutely. Now you and I started this conversation in a very different place because we started with chat GPT's answer to one of the two classic questions that I always ask on this show, but I'm not going to let chat GPT take your job <laughs> just yet. So as we start to wrap, let me, let me give you the choice, Josh, right? So here are the two questions. And for listeners that are new, every single guest Choose us between these two questions and answers one or the other or both in some cases the first time they're on the show. So the two questions are, what would be your definition of a sourcing hero? And the second option is, what do you think heroism looks like in a business context? Sure. So, <clears throat> so I've, been, I've been waiting to be asked this question. And although I, I love I love ChatGPT's answer. I, I will go with the sort. I, I will answer the sourcing hero question. Um, so I think you know, a sourcing hero. I think uh, displays three key traits, and I think the first trait is, and this is a, gr a great quote that I heard from a family friend. Um, but I think the first trait is make haste slowly. So in the world of sourcing, I think a lot of times we are we are pressed to make decisions very fast and work very fast, right? Um, but we need to do that with a slow, uh, with, with a slow frame of mind, right? Like we need to make our decisions carefully by that. And, and that's, that's kind of what I'm getting at is we need to move fast, but still think slow um, and make sure you're, you know, crossing your I's and, uh, I mean, uh, you're Absolutely. dotting your I's, dotting your I's and crossing your T's, right? So I think that's the first characteristic a sourcing hero must display. Secondly, I think we need to always be thinking big picture. Um, you know, in sourcing, it's not like the sourcing strategy is going to go into effect tomorrow, and then we're going to see the, we're, we're going to see the, uh, the fruits of our labor within a week, right? These sourcing strategies take time. It takes, you know, it, it can take three, six, nine months for a sourcing uh, strategy to develop. So we need to constantly be thinking about the big picture and how our how our sourcing strategy is going to impact the business 12 months down the line, 18 months down the line. Um, I think that that makes us effective um, sourcing heroes. And lastly, and I think this is a big one, we need to communicate like a CEO. Um, I think oftentimes within procurement, we can kind of get into the weeds. I know I, I, I suffer from this. I, I get, I tend to get super granular on, on data, right. And just think about the data, but CEOs, all they care, uh, we, they care about the impact on the business. Like, what is this going to, what is this going to lead to? And 
the better we can communicate like a CEO, the better we can communicate our sourcing strategies um, like a CEO to the CEO of the business, the better off we will be as, as sourcing professionals. Well, I think that's a fantastic point of view. And I love this idea of making haste slowly. We have a, a similar expression we use in, in this household that slow is smooth and smooth yes. is fast, right? There we go, yes. Um, and so the, the way that we approach these things, we're constantly dealing with unexpected shifts and disruptions, but that doesn't mean there's ever an excuse to not have an eye dotted, right? Or, or to not have a, a T crossed. We don't want to be creating risk as we go. Exactly. Um, so Josh, thank you so much for joining me. If people have listened into this conversation, and certainly there was your creative approach to chat GPT, there was the, the polls that you're running in some of the LinkedIn groups, if people would like to be a part of your network. What is the best way for them to get in touch? Definitely. Um, I am most active right now on, on LinkedIn. Um, you could just search for me, uh, Joshua Palacios. Um, I, I'm not the only Joshua Palacios out there, but I think I am one of the most active ones out there on, on LinkedIn. <laughs> so you should be able to find some of my, uh, some of my content related to sourcing, chat GPT. Um, you can find it on LinkedIn. Um, and then, you know, just, I'm, I'm always happy to, to, to connect with like-minded, uh, professionals. Um, definitely, um, shoot me a connection request through LinkedIn. Um, that will be the most quickest way to um, definitely connect with me. Excellent. Thank you so much for being here, Josh. Kelly, I appreciate it anytime. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Sourcing Hero Podcast. Join us again next time for more true stories of sourcing and business heroism performed by your colleagues and peers. Look for the Sourcing Hero wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe. Finally, don't forget, sourcing heroism is taking place all around us every day. Keep your eyes open and you're bound to see it. Until next time, I'm your host, Kelly Barner. Stay well and always remember that you can be a hero too.